LZ Chrysler Seagar, one of the great cartoons of all time. You find most cartoonists will have him on their list of inspirations. If you've only grown up on the film Popeye, you're missing a lot. It was the forerunner of all the superhero strips. Here's a guy that could beat up anybody, and he could do it with a can of spinach. You know? <laughs> I loved him. L.Z. Seagar was only 25 when he began writing Thimble Theater, but even at that young age, he had already developed a gift for storytelling. He'd been uh, drawing things like a Charlie Chaplin comic strip in the 1910s and so on, and he had another strip about commuters. Uh, Thimble Theatre gave him the chance really to be a kind of Charles Dickens telling outrageous stories with strangely named characters over a rather lengthy period, quite a protracted narrative. So he had this natural storyteller's gift and, and a gift for creating weird and wonderful characters. When you do it long enough, the characters do sort of write themselves. Like little actors, they kind of take over and, and uh, you know, lead you along to where you can go with it. Seagar had this strong cast of really believable characters. And they were like little actors that, you know, you can take them to a desert island or whatever, and the characters kind of wrote themselves what they would do on that desert island. The characters being uh, olive oil, Castor Oil, her uh, brother, and their, their, their parents, Nana and Cole Oil. Thimble Theater, which was the name of the Seagar's comic strip, was actually designed to replace a previous strip called Midget Movies, which basically had a cast of paper players and they would act out mm -hmm. movies and stories. And so Thimble Theater was very much like that when it first started in 1919. It was always performance theatrically inclined. Well, it was all um, full of action, which uh, is something that I like. I don't like two guys talking back and forth to each other. I don't like the humor to be based on a play of words or anything like that. I like to see some action. Seagar did the one thing that I think all cartoonists sort of aspire to, is he created his own world. I think the lesson from Seagar is as long as your characters are believable and your, your fans know them and love them, you can really play with the medium a little bit and add a little fantasy and they'll go along for that ride. The comic strip was the perfect medium for Seagar to create his characters and their world. Generally, his story would, would last a couple weeks because it was a Sunday page, and in those days, you had much more room to tell a story. Back then, you definitely had a full page to tell the story, so the stories moved a little bit more, but it also uh, allowed cartoonists to draw more. You, like, you really got to see the art of cartooning and the pen work and the line work and the coloring that they wanted, so it, it was much more of an art form. When Seagar had characters in a group, in clumps, he'd just do rounded heads and big noses all lumped together, and, and they'd all be marching together or reacting together, going forward, going backwards, and it was hilarious. And nobody had ever done it before. Seagar did a lot of things nobody had ever done before. He didn't do it to be innovative, he just did it because that seemed to be a natural thing to do. After 10 years of refining his craft, Seagar introduced his greatest creation to Thimble Theater, Popeye. Seagar uh, apparently uh, created the character as this kind of one-off little side character in this one adventure, and then it just sort of hit with readers, and he moved center stage and essentially took over the comic strip. And I think that's how Popeye would have to become popular as an accident, because who in a room is going to sit down and go, I've got it. He's a sailor. He's about 40. Can't speak English very well. Missing an eye, no teeth. People are going to go, yes, people are going to love that. No, it, it, that's one of those things you have to find out by accident because no one could predict that kind of success for this character. When he first sees Popeye in January of 29, he does look very different from the mature character. The face is a lot flatter, the nose is more pushed in, and it looks more split. The chin is much shorter, and overall he looks like a wizened old man. And what's particularly interesting to me is that his costume is entirely in white. And after a short period, Seagar noticed that he just lacked solidity, so he gave Popeye a new black shirt. And he even mentions it in the dialogue. He says to Castor Oil, how would you like me new shirt, Captain? <laughs> but just as uh, Popeye finished up usurping the cast in general, he also specifically usurped Olive Oil's original boyfriend, another tall, skinny character called Ham Gravy, who was, with all the best food in the world, an angular fool. <laughs> Ham wasn't going to stand a chance against this tough adventurer, and he eventually was sidelined into the Sunday pages before disappearing altogether. 
Once Popeye's look and popularity were realized, the Fleischers altered him when they took him to the big screen. Cigar in the comic strip rarely used spinach. As a matter of fact, Popeye's strength came from rubbing the feathers of a magic wiffle hand in a story called Dice Island in 1929. Uh, Popeye was almost killed. He was in a horrible gun battle, all full of bullets. And he stayed on, on board a ship and just rubbed the wiffle hen's top feathers. And it gave him such good luck that he conquered the bullets and they didn't bother him and he gained his strength from that. And he came back really strong and, and beat the villains. But that was without eating spinach. Later on, Cigar introduced Spinach just as a gag. The Fleischers decided just to use that whenever they wanted this character to gain some extra strength, and it became his trademark. The trademark of spinach with Popeye comes from the Fleischer cartoons, really. It was invented in the Seagar strip, but the Fleischers popularized it. LZ Seagar is not a household name, but the generations of cartoonists he inspired certainly are. He's another one of those cartoonist cartoonists, you know. I, I, you find most cartoonists will have him on their list of inspirations. I think I got a little bit of uh, Sarge beating on uh, Beetle Bailey a little bit from Popeye. Of course, we all learn from our predecessors, and uh, I, don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. One of the nicest things about becoming a cartoonist is I did get to uh, meet my hero, Charles Schultz, and become friends with him. And uh, we talked about Seagar's Popeye a real lot. He, he loved Popeye, and as a kid, he drew Popeye all the time. Popeye was an influence on him. And if you read Popeye and Peanuts, it doesn't seem that way because they're kind of different strips. But I think what he probably got out of Popeye was that uh, element of fantasy and surrealism. You know, having the Jeep, you know, the magical character in Popeye, or Alice the Goon, I think gave Schultz permission to have Snoopy go on his doghouse and make believe he was a World War I flying ace. As a kid, I mean, uh, he was an early influence, and he was also an influence on Will Eisner, who did the spirit, for whom I worked. So Eisner and I would talk about Seeger, and I would see Seeger's influence on Eisner, and I would be influenced by Eisner, and I don't think Seeger had any role models. He just made it up as he went along. I think he was completely original. LZ Seeger passed away at 44, just nine years after Popeye's birth. He could not have imagined that his accidental hero would thrive for generations beyond his own, cementing Seagar's legacy in entertainment history and American culture. In the world of comics history, Seagar is celebrated not only for, for these great characters that he created, but also these great sort of surreal rambling storylines that he created. The important thing to Seagar was telling the story. You know, a big part of comics is drawing funny, and he, he just drew funny. I mean, the, the characters he designed were just great to look at. You know, it's a simpler style, a little cleaner style, but it's his style, and that's what makes each cartoonist great. One of the things that makes Popeye work is you feel with all of the slapstick, with all of the violence, with all of the crazy plotting, the humanity that's underneath this, the essential goodwill. I don't know anything about Seagar as a man, but you do get the kind of innate decency out of the auteur behind the work.